Hey everybody, this is Conspiracy again. I'm here today because I feel I'd be the first person to bring this to light, this very serious situation in the music industry, this unexplainable, you might say, tragedy, or, or not, because uh, it could just as well be a cover-up, and this is what I'm going to try and figure out. What? I think the show was made to be a psyop in that it had one actor, Jeremy Gelbwax, and he was portraying Chris Partridge. And before you knew it, like, there was the end of one season and then on to another, and suddenly there was a different actor, Brian Forster, playing Chris. So how could this family have one son named Chris that don't even look alike. I do not understand it. I went to the library. It's the best library in this area and it has a fount of knowledge regarding everything else that I like to research, but I couldn't come up with one thing to explain this. And I, I definitely feel there's a cover up happening here. Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and dig right in here and start with the worst to best Partridge Family records. The first one that I would say would be the worst one but, no, I just got to say, this is just my opinion. Yours may be different, and if you need to leave a comment down below about your favorite Partridge Family Records, in what order you like them, feel free to do so if you want to spend the time. So, the first one is called the Partridge Family Notebook. Um, not a bad record, but the cover reminds me of being in school where I, I have to take notes all day and all that stuff but strong thing about this record is on side two there's a killer version of we gotta get out of this place it just i don't know i think it compares almost to the animals version maybe anyways so partridge family notebook the second album from worst to first is the Partridge Family Christmas card. It's their Christmas record. It has, again, killer version of Jingle Bells. And they even tackle Frosty the Snowman. Um, it could be, no, I think it's all pretty common Christmas songs, so I don't even think they bothered to write a special song for them. The next album is uh, Partridge Family Sound Magazine. Uh, that's one of my favorite songs on this album is Echo Valley 26809. And um, another one, I Woke Up in Love This Morning. A killer version. This album is noted for, you get to find out uh, David's favorite things. For instance, his favorite drink was supposedly 7-Up. <laughs> but he loves the song, The Thrill Is Gone. The next album would be their greatest hits. So all their great hits like I Think I Love You, I'll Meet You Halfway, It's One of Those Nights, again, Echo Valley 26809, I Woke Up and Love This Morning, I Can Feel Your Heartbeat, Doesn't Somebody Want to Be Wanted, 
all great songs, you know. They're played to death on the radio and on the TV show. So now we're going to veer away because I think these albums count also in the canon. This is Rock Me Baby by David Cassie. It's his second solo record. So it's got the title track, Rock Me Baby, Song for a Rainy Day, a killer version of How Can I Be Sure. Great cover too. And the next one is David Cassidy's first solo record, Cherish. So obviously it has a version of Cherish. And yeah, you know, not a bad record overall. It's got a lot of photos of him wearing pretty cool shirts and jeans and stuff. Now this next album is where there, there's starting to be a little bit of controversy. Up to date, the last one with Jeremy Gubwax. And, you know, he was as good a drummer as Hal Blaine. And um, a very colorful album cover. Uh, I'll Meet You Halfway is on there. Doesn't Somebody Want to Be Wanted? Lay It on the Line, co-written by David Cassidy. We're getting to the last two records, number two. And then we'll go to number one, the best of the Partridge Family. Here we go. The Partridge Family album was their first album. It looks like a photo album, but there's actually a record in it. And it had songs that were featured in the TV show, and it came out simultaneously when the show ran, and everybody had it. And then eventually everybody gave this up to thrift stores. And this includes their probably their biggest hit, I Think I Love You, which started them hot out of the gate introduce David Cassidy as a major lead singer and heartthrob. So number one record is Bonaducci, the fantastic. Who would ever thought that he would go off and make such a strong solo record? And the thing is, I think he spent everything he had on this one record. I, I would have assumed he might have tried to continue as a solo recording artist, but being in the band, that had a lot of um, responsibilities too. But he did get this opportunity to make the album Bonaducci. And it's, I mean, what's great about it is his vocals are quadrupled track, so it, it's sort of like a quadraphonic effect. He's got amazing voice when it's put through all these effects. Um, this was before the days of auto-tune, so you got to give him credit. And he may have even played a little bass on this record. I'm not sure. Anyways, that about wraps up the worst to best of the Partridge family. Not enough can be said of the importance of Shirley Jones as one of the lead singers of the Partridge family, or at least backup singer, but she had a pretty solid solo career of her own being in so many musicals. And I think... Ah, oh, you're back. Seems like I just left. Now where are you heading? To the future. Way, way, way in the future. I may never be back. I gotta go. One solid piece of evidence I was able to uncover was by placing their first album on the turntable and playing it in reverse. And this is how it sounded. I know it, Jeremy. I know it, Jeremy. I know it, Jeremy. I know it, Jeremy. It was uh, pretty obvious that um, they were putting clues throughout their recordings and possibly some visual cues in the TV shows. But I think finding this one clue on the record is pretty significant. 
uh, in order to uh, expose this uh, cover up. <laughs> Thanks for spending some time here today at this channel. Um, I, I would hope that you all play your records backwards. There could be a lot of clues to a lot of mysteries in life. And I think, like I said, I'm not certain about what this cover up was all about, but I think I'm onto something. And when I get more information, I will be the first to report it and I hope everyone else out there can start their own theories and maybe post some investigational videos also. All in all, I also want to get into a very touchy subject. Uh, it has to do with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And this is just another rant on how they just never seem to get things right. I mean, how long has the Partridge family been eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And they have been snubbed year after year after year after year after year after year after year so i think it's about time we ought to put our vote in for the partridge family come on